Okay, let's have a look at question eight. If you want to practice the skill that's needed for this question in advance, then watch video 15 on my channel. It's all about the ambiguous case of the sine rule. The triangle ABC is such that the distance from A to B is 12 centimeters and the angle at A, also known as the angle BAC, is 50 degrees. Given that B to C has a distance of 10 centimetres, determine the two possible values of the angle at C, okay, which is also the angle A to C to B, or B to C to A. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sketch to show you how there are two possible solutions to this. So if I, if I say that AC is the base of this triangle, C is somewhere along there. So A is this point over here. And the angle at A is 50 degrees. So if I got my protractor and measured it out, it would be approximately like that, but this is just a sketch. So let's say that this was a 50 degree angle. And let's say that that distance to B was 12 centimeters. And that C is somewhere along this base. Now, if I opened out my protractor to 10 centimeters, so let's say that's approximately 10 centimeters, and I did an arc, let's say something like that, and you can see that it cuts through at two different places, one there and one there. So my point C could be over here, where that's 10 centimeters, or it could be over here, where that's also 10 centimeters. So there are two possible triangles that have this C could be there, C could be there. This will probably be, I'm going to call this one C1 and this one C2 because we're likely to find the acute angle first, and the acute angle would be that angle there for C. Okay, I'm gonna put that one in green. And then the obtuse angle would be this angle here at C. Okay, so we can see that there are two possible angles, one which is acute and one which is obtuse. If I have this smaller triangle, I'll have an obtuse angle, and if I have this bigger triangle, both with BC being 10 centimeters, but with AC being different lengths, then I'll have an acute angle here. So using the sine rule, I can write down a connection between 50 degrees with 10 centimeters, because that's the opposite side to 50, and angle C with 12 centimeters. I'm gonna call angle, the angle at C, I'm gonna call it theta. So I'm gonna write theta there. So theta could be that one, I'm going to call this theta 1, and I'm going to call this one, that angle there, I'm going to call it theta 2. And I'm going to call them both just theta, and then there will be specific values of theta, theta 1 and theta 2. So the sine rule says that sine of 50 over 10 centimeters, over 10, is equal to sine of theta over 12, because that's the opposite side to theta. Then if I rearrange this and solve this, I multiply by 12, and that's what sine theta would be equal to. So sine theta would be equal to 12 lots of sine 50 over 10, which is a decimal value. And then if I do the inverse sine of that decimal value, I get theta. So theta will be the inverse sine of this decimal. And my calculator would give me 66.8 degrees. However, we know that on our sine curve, there are two values between 0 and 180, which would give us the same height for any positive value from that. So if this, this, this decimal value, which is, which is there, gives us 66.8, there's 180, on our sine curve, this is 66.8, the 
the other value is over here, and that is 180 minus 66.8, so the other value is 113.2 degrees. So those are my two solutions, the two possible values. So this one is theta 1, and this one is theta 2. Okay. Part B, state two conditions for the length B to C, such that if either of them is satisfied, there will be only one value for the angle C. Now, when I opened up my protractor, sorry, when I say protractor, I mean compass. I often get them mixed up. When I opened up my compass and drew this arc, it cut through twice, and therefore there were two possible values for the, for the angle at C and for the length from A to C as well. But if I wanted only one value for the angle C and therefore one length A to C, this arc cannot cut through twice. So either it is so long that it only cuts through to the right and it doesn't cut through to the left, so it just misses A you see there. So it would only cut through to the right. So have a think about how long it would need to be so that it doesn't cut through on this side because the length is going this way, so it cuts through just to the left of A rather than to the right of A. I'll draw the, what that might look like. So if we had our base length, C is somewhere along there, A is over here, B is 12 centimeters at a 50 degree angle. So let's just pretend I've drawn this to scale and that's there, that's B, and that's 12 centimeters. For the arc to only meet once, it needs to be such that it would look like something like this, where it cuts here or beyond on this line, and that it would cut through the first time it would cut through would be just at A, and that wouldn't be a triangle because that would just be a straight line. So therefore, A to C, that length, would be such that the length from B to C would need to be at least 12 centimetres. So B to C has to be greater than or equal to 12 centimetres. That would be our first condition to get one value for the angle at C. So C would need to be here or beyond, i.e. the arc would need to be 12 centimetres or greater, and then it would only cut through once through this baseline, here or beyond, and not over here because this length starts here and goes to the right. The only other way of getting one solution is if my arc also cuts once, but it cuts so that it bounces off and it just barely brushes the curve. So 10 centimeters cuts through twice. But if I bring it closer, it would cut through once and that point would be directly below B. So this is the second condition. I'll do this one in green. Second condition would be where C is directly below B. So C would have to be here. And that would mean B to C was perpendicular. So that's the second condition. B to C is perpendicular to A to C. So those are the two conditions where I would only have exactly one value for the angle at theta. One which is 90 degrees and the other one where you have a longer length from B to C than you do for B to A.